My name is Ruby Dolo. So today I'm your MC. <laughs> I'm not going to give all my details. However, um, we want to be grateful to Latoma Bar or Resto Bar for all of their support towards Ms. Rep. Liberia. And I stand here as the National Director for Ms. Rep. Liberia 2021 and forever. Wow. <laughs> So, Ms. Rep. Liberia is Liberia Women Environmental Women Empowerment Project. Started in 2018 as a nation, 2019 became a pageant, and now it's an annual one in Liberia. In Liberia, most prestigious pageant. Pick that to thank you. Well, today I present to you 10 beautiful goddesses who are vying for the prestigious title of Ms. Rep. Liberia 2020. And our host for the day is no one else but Madam Vivian Nike Ines, a gender specialist, United Nations Development Program. And our second yes. panelist is no one else but Madam Deja Dean. She is a professional in Nowadays Liberia. And she is the mentor for almost every beautiful queen in Liberia. Yeah, they want to succeed. So we just don't have a panelist of local women, but they are all women that have, you know, they have made some different parts, and they are women that you can learn a lot from. And going to the team of our queen entertainment, who made this program of success, and seeing these queens looking all beautiful, we have Madam Faith, Man, and we have um, this Mama Wild Man. And they're talking about Mr. Liberia with Room. And today we have one of our mentees in our day. She represented the Element Star in the 20th edition of Mr. Liberia. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to retain my position as National Director and take you strictly to your panel as you introduce yourself. Thank you. Yes, because upon the eyes of all the minors, except 
center for those in your head. And lubricate your eyes, keep the surface of your eyes soft and clear. And protect your eyes from eye infection and infection to stay your face. It is in the domain and yes, you don't need to know your character. My name is Miss Odara White Tomo, the guidance of power in the third edition of this Earth that we love you imagine. It is an honor today to be in the midst of all of you, phenomenal women who are, who are inspirations to young women in Nigeria. The element with which I represent flower is used for decorative purposes and can be used to make spice for our food, perfumes, and other stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your guys of power, Miss Odella White Romo. Thank you. Rock play the fundamental role in the ecosystem. Sell me as the parental mineral in the development of soil. I am made of mountains and hills. When I'm hot, I feel inspired. Livingstone is process to make cement for construction industries for modern roads, bridges, building, and many appliances. And I'm using it every day. Like. Once again, I'm listening to the positive and the gladness of the world. Greeting everyone. I am Miss Oma Abu, the goddess of stars in the third edition of this Earth Like New York Beauty Pageant. Stars are very important because they make life on Earth. Stars are huge celestial bodies made mostly of hydrogen and helium that produce heat and light inside their core. I provide the heavy metals that your body used to function. I provide it light, gravity, and more. So today I am very grateful to be part of this chat on all of the team, gentle environment, and livelihood security. I want to say thank you to our organizer, Michael Entertainment and the Environmental Protection Agency for giving us young women the opportunity to work on carrying on awareness on what effect I'm grateful to have all of you here this afternoon, especially on the this topic, Chamber Improvement and Lightning Insecurity. What inspired me to join this unique platform is because I'm a student who studied environmental science. And now I was like, how can I come up to, you know, advocate, educate awareness that the public will want to listen to? So I decided to join this platform, this Unlike And this year, this Unlike my advocacy is against air pollution. Why my advocacy is against air pollution? Because air pollution is detrimental to human health, and inhalation of toxic agents that affects the lungs and other organs that makes up the respiratory system. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a Hello everyone. I'm Eleanor B. Bowen, the goddess of plants in the third edition of this Earth As the goddess of plants, I saw carbon dioxide that I released in the air and gave us oxygen that humans and animals need to live. Without me, there won't be food because I play a very significant role in our food chain. Without me, doctors and nurses don't have medicines to kill people. The air will become viral with plants. Therefore, it is very important to say that we cannot live with plants. I should be proud of myself by the river because I want to continue working with black point in the cement and other environmental 
organization to do more awareness in the heart of Nigeria on air pollution, sea erosion, water erosion. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Kelly Dodi from the Islands of Plants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Ms. Patricia Chinaya, a goddess of the world, the third edition of the of my beloved patients. Based on my beloved platform, it is a platform that gave you the opportunity to address issues of our environment and how we turn it so into. Rainbow is a natural phenomenon that occurred after a rain. Rainbow has seven beautiful colors. Beautifully, Rainbow is important to the world and because it genesis nine versatility, disability, cloudless rainbow, in the sky as his promise that he will never destroy the earth. Thanks. Princess and Davis, the guide of the time in the third edition of this year by the Real Pageant. Well, I want to take this time to thank the Queen for teaming in the Mission by Nero for giving us this opportunity in being in the midst of you innovative women. So, Madam Vivian and Miss Christine, we are overwhelmed to be part of this unique chat on the team, gender environment, and lack of security. It is a good topic to learn on today. Well, I am time, and I am the mother of the six months. I tell you today everything needs time to operate. Well, if we just put in our time to look after nature, to look after the things that maintain our environment, trust me, we all will have a healthy life today, a safe air to breathe, and a good mother every day to call our home. I guess Princess and Davis, your guidance in time. So I think what I said earlier <laughs> it's being seen and I'm so proud of myself and I'm proud of my team because when you have worked so hard to not see the work going negatively well, when it's going positively, you keep it present and you want to do more. So on behalf of La Queen Entertainment, we will officially turn it back over. I'm doing it on behalf of them. So when I say we will, we'll show up at the six months. So we will officially turn the mark over to our candidates. I'm not going to appear here again. You have a conversation with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what can I say after this very, very great introduction? I mean, I'm just overwhelmed and like I need to hear more. I can't wait for that day. Um, I would like to say on behalf of Natoma Incorporated and Natoma Restobar, we would like to say welcome to our beautiful young ladies who have been um, in this race to become this wife. But I can assure you that you all are already qualified. You are qualified. Thank you. You have proven to the world that you represent. So I'm so proud of you, and we are proud of you. We say welcome and be at home and enjoy yourself. This conversation today is going to be a friendly one. It's a chat, as we stated, and you can come in, you can ask questions, you can bring in objections and what have you. And that'll take most of your time. I will proceed to the main reason why we are here. But first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am Miss Vivian DJ Ines. I work for UNDP Liberia. I am the gender justice specialist. I am also a student of the Louis Atta Grand School of Law. I have a master in sustainable international development, which I, I was able to have some ideas on environmental health, also climate change, conservation. So um, I've had 
issues with uh, panel issues with gender development, youth development, plus the environment. Even though I, I wouldn't consider myself to be an expert in the environmental field, but because of conservation knowledge, climate change, little bit of everything I added to it, and that is what your entire world is all about. And that is one of the unique things about this in this art. Because when you look at the team, you wouldn't really see how important it is when you talk about this earth. But going back to the background, why what it's all about. It's a global team that tries to address issues of sustainable development. And when you talk about sustainable development, it's holistic. Then you break it down into what are the issues that people face when it comes to women being in the environment and not being recognized. Women who are one or who were one recognized to be the key actor of the environment. Where are they? Where are their place right now in the environment? Then you start to ask these questions. Are women actually being um, listened to, or are they in the problem when it comes to handling these issues? These are issues that come up in sustainable development. That is one thing that I love about it, and I love about this team, this earth, because you can be able now. You all have a place. And you come in not just as individual, but you come in as one. And because the world challenges cannot be solved by one person, you come with your idea to get. You don't even have to win, but your idea to be solved for all that you never know. So I will want to admonish you all to actually come up with very good teams. Because there's an emerging issues. You won't believe that right now, when it comes to developing world, we that work with the UN, all of what we do right now is Henry. Health issues, issues that have to do with climate change, women, justice, all linked to the earth. So those and those unique qualities that will help us to move ahead with our development within Liberia. So I will like to share today the theme: gender, environment, and livelihood security. Did it just come up because um, we wanted to look at this earth and say, okay, we want to link up something. But this is an issue that is being very, very serious and being recognized around the world. And how can we go about this as a country or as a uniform? How can we live in an environment that we cannot take care of? And how can we not take care of an environment without taking care of women? And when it comes to the team, the, 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 the word gender, I always love to you know, distinguish between the meaning of gender because most people will say it's all about women. It's not about women. Gender has to do with both men and women. So why gender, environment, and livelihood is speaking to why is it that women and men will live in an environment. Women play a major role. Women work in the agricultural sector. Women do farming. Women go for water. Women are the ones that get up every day. Why is it that women are still at the back? That's a big question that we need to ask ourselves. Even though we are the ones that get up in the morning, we fetch the water, we go to the farm, but we are still at the back. Even in communities or towns, when you talk about town chiefs, you had a man with me. But we control the earth. We are more friendly to the earth than men. Not to say that our men are not important. Men are important. But I can show you that even our men can recognize that we do. I say we because I'm a woman and I'm so proud of that. We women will play a very major role. And that role needs to be recognized. It, it is a problem within development that our role we play are not being recognized. And I will tell you for one part, reason why issues of the environment like water, why should we be having issues with water in Liberia? You know one of the reasons why? Because in the legislature, how many women do you see there? You can count their few. And who you think going to advocate for things that are very important to you? If not yourself. Men prioritize things that they feel important. Women prioritize things that are important to them. So take for example, as a woman, 
My first priority to me, I think it was my children, education, clean water that is drink, electricity. I don't want my children to go into any kind of area that is polluted. But, men, we've been thinking about all big, big, that raw form kind of thing, you know, big, big money in, it, in the house. How many men are going to be advocating in our house? We, we will never hear those kind of story about men advocating for, okay, hospital, the hospital doesn't have light, or this here is this, or there's no toilet in our community. How many men? Let's be honest. But when you come to those heavy raw funds in our oil black issues, and you know that big money in BBI, they will talk about it. Because what is important to them. And we are not saying that men should be prioritized what they prioritize. Women should prioritize and women should be represented. So when it comes to women being, so even the environmental protection agency needs to ensure that they are executive. The hierarchies need to be women. Because women will prioritize those things that are important to them. And because of that, I have not one thing I prioritize. That may have a one of oil black in one of it's important for my country. So when we combine those different ideas, then what you do with me, Marie? I bring my first one. I bring my idea, my man bring an idea. We sit in the hospital, sponsor with five those necessary bills. And guess what? We'll be moving forward. What you're gonna go to food storage or drink clean water. We have any sea uh water and sea water right all the water point, all the kind of things children say, all the things linked to the ice. So women representation in the environment is very, very key. And that is why I wanted you all to know today. As you all move on to the project, keep in your mind those innovative ideas that you can come up with. And say, let's push in like we are. Our policy maker will listen to us. Think us out of the box. It's important and it will really help us. And we all will smile, we all will be happy, we all will support. We are here to provide our support. And I can assure you that I told my going to be there, I'm going to be there. So, personal <laughs> support to the La Queen. And all of you. I'm going to support you all because I think this initiative is very important and it helps to move like we forward. It helps to ensure that like we sustainability is starting. It also shows that you know there's a hope because a few young people it shows something like this. There is a hope. We have young innovative women that are going to come with ideas to move our country forward. So I'm going to stop here for now and turn the back forward to my senior sister, who I don't have very, very good things to say, and we can always start in to, to answer some questions and concerns that you have. Thank you, and welcome once more here. I'm always around. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I, I feel so good, basically, to be Get happiness from abroad with Iwali this Christmas season. Iwali now allows you to. I'm an educator, and we all know myself. I also work with the Department of Education, and I work with the Department Get happiness from abroad with Iwali this Christmas season. And Gender Magazine is winning for the Christmas since 1995. And the first sponsor for the magazine was you. I came up with the idea because I attended the United Nations the Sport World Women Conference in uh, Beijing, China. And when we came back, they asked, what can you do? As you know, gender is for men, for men. it doesn't necessarily specify what it means for everyone. So I spent my life in education. I have a school and it's been established along with my husband since 1975. As for beauty pageants, I've been involved for, I can't remember the year, but you need the queens that have been successful uh, just coming in. And uh, so this.
there we are. We look forward to working with the ladies. And when a queen speaks, we want to hear you clearly from all the divisions. I listen to Miss Light, Miss Warner, Miss Hill, Tears, Flowers. Number five, I didn't get what you what what is your element? I listen to Miss Air, Miss Star, Miss Plants, Miss Rainbow, and of course time. So when you speak, we expect you to be very particular. Take your time, speak loudly, looking for your pronunciation. So if I say that uh, I didn't hear you and most of you guys not to be so critical. But I only understood what you really was representing after you had spoken for several, several sentences. Then I began to grasp very closely also this is one. And I would love to hear you be very, very articulate. Because we uh, we have some the future of money is here. Iwali allows you to pay, transfer, and shop online all from one place. Your phone. Setting up Iwali is simple. Sign up, deposit money at any vendor, and start shopping. Iwali has already caught the attention of hundreds of people who use the app to transfer money and pay for goods, water, electricity, and TV. The number of users is growing every day. Do you want to grow your business, reach more people online, or make more money? You can offer your products online on our app, and your customers can pay you safely with eWally. Our eWally team will take care of delivering your products from you to your customer. You will receive your money instantly through our banking partner, GT Bank. Businesses get their first three months completely free of charge. Set up your business account with eWally.com. Our customer service is available if you have any questions. And so I would like to ask number five, if she could give me her element again. And just tell us what you think is gender. How do you define the word gender? There's a mic right there. Okay, you, what, what do you know about it? How does it impress you? It, it impressed me so much of that I established a, a magazine and I go into communication and then I look at everyone. Okay, thank you so, so much. Yeah. Chenna impressed me in the way that I feel to help others because there are so many other singers out there in the environment in which they are willing for us to get help. So as you employees, one question is, how am I going to get help to them? Because they are willing to learn, they are willing to give their support to the society. So if I'll be crowned this earth like Nero, I'll be their educator to be able to educate both male and female. Thank you so much. When you say gender, like um, you refer to male and female. That's how I would say it. So what do you mean? Um, being a gender, at first I am a gender. I would say I am a female, so I'm strong. I believe in myself, and as being a gender, I want to raise my voice to many voices to help combat climate change. Remember, we have one mission, and that is to protect Mother Earth. Thank you. Uh, 
the list of tests that you can see. Yeah. We should also stop the topic of household waste because it will terminate soil and water. And I will be advocating on the empowerment.
class can be taken about again. We see the gender. We need everyone. We are not going to discriminate if you're looking for equity. That's why you have water, the various elements. Uh, a man can no longer live without life. So we need both genders to benefit. So that's what we're doing.
not even in the middle or all the elements or all that. So I'll go back and research because you have educated me today. So be free, be at home, and just break up your best that's in you. No more the crime for that. So, so my queen is Claire. Let's tell us what you do. Thank you. 
with water. It's just water. And I think I'll ask the same question. Why should we have a problem with water when, what is it, three fourths of the earth is covered with water? And how can we um, solve the new problem, the environmental problem? Thank you so much. I am Miss Lorena B. Johnson, the goddess of water. Yeah, we have problem with our water because our water are not well taken care of. And for us to protect it, we need to carry on the awareness. Like educating people on the importance of water. Because most people who may know water to be used for drinking. Well, as, as we carry on the awareness, educating people on how it is important, that, that in that way, in that way, people will get to follow the importance of it and put it in place. Thank you, that sounds so good. I like the way you say people, and then we can also add that we can make it gender balance because remember that we all want to benefit from the one. So I, I, I like that idea. Thank you. Next is tears. What can you tell us that tears can just help our environment or How how does it relate to the, the topic that we have here? Gender, environment, and livelihood security. Can it relate to all of those things?
me about the road sign and you read it. Yeah, so they are all passing air pollution because you will notice that when sun starts to, you know, uh, calm down, they sin. They will all be moving away. People will throw the toilet and all these risky in the environment that have caused air pollution. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Water pollution is throwing plastic in the oceans and in our rivers and streams around us. So if you have your plastic, you can recycle and take it back to the factory or, you know, you just recycle it and maybe they might uh, um, collect it because those fishes in the river, the turtles all over, if they eat that plastic, it will it will kill them before that time. So if, if we can just put in... Um, in place the five hours, it will be good for us. At least if you drink your water, you will find uh, 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 garbage on the streets. You can put it in it instead of you just throwing it up and down because um, it's not good for, for Mother Earth. It's not good for you. It's not good for me. So today I'm encouraging all of you sitting here today to please recycle. It's actually important because if you don't recycle and these plastics are thrown all around the place, they will be put together for burning and it's not good. It causes air pollution. So let's please put stop to uh, throwing waste all around the place. Thank you. 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 The five arrow sign, recycle, rethink, reduce, reuse, and respect Mother Earth. Recycle, rethink, reuse, respect Mother Earth. Recycle, reuse, reduce, respect, and retain. Environment and security. And so 
to live in, especially for both genders. So I want to ask this question because it is an honor to participate in, in this chat, gender environment and livelihood security. How positively has it affected the adolescent girls and infants across the country in life? Okay, when you speak to livelihood, environment, and gender, I would say that there have been a lot of progress. But to me, as, a, as an individual, and speaking in my own capacity, not for my office or anyone else, I would say that um, there is a need for a lot to be done when it comes to how we help or promote uh, is ensure that adolescent girls are well um, catered to when it comes to livelihood. Because the thing about livelihood is linked to our daily need, the benefits of everyone, how women and men should benefit within a society. Like, take for example, if we are in a country where we have um, companies coming in, like, say for Nima County, you have Asilometa. If Asilometa is there and operating, citizens of those different environments that they are operating within should be able to benefit from their operation. There are companies that are coming in from different countries and they are actually taking something out of our environment. And we have women and men who are there. How are women, how are children benefiting? Then you start to ask yourself, do they have schools? Do they have hospitals? Where are the social corporate responsibilities of these different companies? How are our people in the market benefiting from them? And I would say that much having been done, and there's a need for more advocacy around this. We need to push, and this can only be done if you, me, and those who believe in those calls or causes can actually speak to it. If we don't speak, like I said, nothing will happen. But if we speak, a lot can be done. Thank you. Thank you so much. The reason I ask because we are all innovative women, we are all leaders, and I believe that after this chat, I will have more questions to answer because people will be like, you participated in the quiz chat and I want to learn more because I believe that there are more people out there we are who have been victimized. Some of them have been raped and some of them have been threatened. Yeah, so thank you so much. I'll, at least I learned a lot from you today. So let me just add gender, not only gender, but girl. Because when I was a mother, we have our boys. They are also being victimized. So remember, we almost we always should think of gender. What's good for our girl is good for our boys. And as a mother, you want full protection for your children, whether you're a boy or a girl. Yeah, let's just keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay, so uh, my question is, as individuals, what have you guys been like working on? to so implement women empowerment and maybe gender equality. Yeah, maybe gender Wow. Yeah. Um, that's a tough one. Personally, yeah, personally, I'm a gender advocate naturally. I have had that um, passion since I was a child, and I always fight for that. And that was what actually led me to getting in this field. So I used to work in a bank. I was very comfortable. I had a managerial position. And I thought I was growing in that field. But because I thought within myself that 
I'm doing this thing. Yes, I'm getting the salary. I'm getting the promotion and everything. But there's something lacking. My voice is not being heard. I'm here doing facility. I'm here putting in money for people every now and then. I'm getting my tape and what have you. I'm doing well. I'm living large. But how am I helping women out there? How am I helping girls? How am I helping boys? That was how I diverted. I was doing MBA at Cottington, but I decided I say, I will for it. I will do my master's in sustainable international development. Something I link to gender. Or I will do my, you know, my minor in gender. So I got a scholarship was passion. As a woman living in Liberia from a very poor family, I never had help. I wrote serious letters, but because I was passionate about what I wanted to do, I took the leap of faith. I took half scholarship, travel with my daughter, and went to America. Never even had nowhere to live. But I went there, I said I would get it. And I would learn this thing, I would go back and work. I went, I traveled out of school two times. But then it stopped. Just to tell you what passion does. I went to school, dropped off. The grades were good and everything. I started to push. But the thing about, about faith and passion, whenever you have that, keep it in mind. Let that be your source of comfort. I wrote some women organization in America who I never knew anyway. Those women took my brain. They decided to pay my balance school fee and take care of being my child. Graduated with honors and came back. I started to work. And the, the thing that happened was so funny. Like, I had my sisters in the US. They were like, stay here, me. When you go back. Like, I took this decision to come here to learn to go back to get my country. How can I leave here? When I was coming, my friends, my sister couldn't believe. Like, I told them, I said, now you're waiting for marriage. I will go prepare myself and everything. I will come back. I will march. My first gift I got. I had to do a project, I had to do with girls. I had to listen to girls. So this was a warping project. I had to do with girls who was into businesses in my DB, born in Nima. And they were amazing. We have so much potential in this country. You won't believe it. Those girls were into businesses that collapsed during the Ebola. But they needed help to enhance their businesses. Someone said it's so fresh and what have you. Then I went by so one time for God PS. The girls wanting money. I said, my sister, I want to learn how to pay soap. They think that money, if you see their balances on a daily basis, you won't believe it. And I saw that if these people can do this thing, we're giving only $120 to that woman project, we just for a year. I felt so good, and I never regretted what I rushed to come back. Even my suffering I went through, I mean, everything went up. So I will say to you that the potentials are there and we're passionate are there. You who are sitting here today, if you are passionate about anything, you can do it and you can help the society today. I still mentor most of the girls who were into this project and they are doing well. Some of them are from West Point. Most of them were into businesses in in town, so from my DB and Vassal, they still reach out to me. They are looking up for more opportunities. But this tell you that if we as individuals can just not look at life for ourselves, I could sit in a bed and say, I'm happy, I'm comfortable. But I thought that it was not about me. And people want to hear our own story. I came from nowhere, living like where I used to stay poor before. I saw in the market before. So it tells you that. Anybody can go up and left with you the way you take yourself. And keep in mind that the end result is what you want. And I haven't gotten to where I want to be. That's why I'm giving you school right now. So I will turn it over. Right? So that's a tip. <laughs> well, for me, um, I always been in education. And basically, because I feel that want to read something and you want to harvest in one year, you can plan for it. And if I only want a 10-year investment, I can plan it too. But if I want a legacy that will live on after me, what will you invest in? Which will go on and on. So that, that is my legacy and that is why I'm so many educators. Basically, I enjoy working with young.
young women in the pageant because I wanted young women to know that they can do it themselves. If you join a pageant, you don't have to go around and be begging and getting sponsors and doing all kinds of things. You can do it yourself and you can be totally independent. Always remember, you want a lifetime of investment, invest in education and invest in people. Opportunity 
to send out messages out there to your girls who still believe that party girls are prostitutes. Party girls are not prostitutes, but they are building a self intelligence and self confidence. And moreover, they are turning our dreams into reality. Okay, my question is to you. I want to know three Lambda Who and Gabriel. Livelihood and career. So when you speak to livelihood, livelihood is linked to your entitlement as well, like your basic rights. You have rights to having running water. You have rights to having food, shelter, and everything. Those things that society should provide for you. When it comes to your career, it's something that you work for, you work hard for, and you are in that position to contribute something and also earn something as well. Livelihood that is linked to the environment is something like your basic needs, like your right to water, your right to electricity, and who provides those things? Your national leadership. But when it comes to your career, it's something that is basically your own. You own onto your own career. Like you decide to come here today. No one made you to come here today. Your government can tell you say you must take part in uh, 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 Miss Earth. But you are entitled to have those basic needs. And you have your right to advocate for it. Hmm? In some way, government can push for you to have your career. But they can tell you say become doctor. They can tell you become nurse. But it can help you, like get, providing the basic needs. There will like they will link. You will choose your own career and go home and buy your basic needs. I hope that was clear. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, I'm in a lengthy July, the goddess of light. Okay, now we heard a bit, we heard a lot of things about the environment. We all know the environment is a wonderful place. The earth is of everything. She gives us shelter, she gives us clothes, she gives us food. Now, I want to know, how can we save the earth? So everyone in here today would take home like, oh, now today I can do this to save the earth. I can do this to save Mother Earth. So, so you both, how can we save the earth? No, I'm asking you, I'm asking you, how can we save Mother Earth? Okay. You know, I still let anyone go. Okay, um, so one of the things that we talk about, we talk about pollution and we talk about waste. What we can do as, I would say, one of the things that we can do, how we manage our waste how we manage pollution. And how do we do that? We're talking about plastic waste. We cannot come up with policies, but we can advocate as individual citizens. Because we don't have that authority to say, you, you put in that plastic there, darn it. I will arrest you. When the government got nothing in place to arrest somebody for dropping plastic, you know, like Brembo will ask, he said, where are you? Yeah, yeah where are you? Where are you even coming from? So, what we as individuals can do is to advocate for these different measures. And like I always tell people, the need to research to see how other countries are applying these things or even um, putting in these different mechanisms. We can adapt it. We can learn from those innovation and put it in our own way and see how best we can apply it. But it starts with the thinking, the mind, and the innovation. Thank you. All right, she has answered it in the big picture. Yeah. Uh, I think that we also can advocate to save Mother Earth. And 
in our own individual way that we don't just dump our trash anywhere. You start with yourself in your neighborhood, in your home, and in your environment. And so maybe many of the men don't really know, as you said, advocate for policy. Many men don't even realize that they are polluting. They think, I don't know what they think, but they don't realize it. But I start in my own community, in my own home, and as the school, I would tell kids to clean up behind, keep a clean environment. Don't dump your personal dirt on the street and so forth. So if you do that, if you do that, and each and every one of us do that, we will have cleaner libraries. I think it is the town that is, uh, I think it's Kigali. Yeah. The place is so clean. Yeah. And it's on an individual effort. But every citizen, and also in Ghana, you have to start with yourself. And then each and every one of us have a national pride that we will not um, dump the dirt and just, you know, don't clean up behind ourselves. Start with you, start with your environment. Start with your community, start with your home. Then tell your name, oh, Mary, you drop that. And you have a very beautiful day. <laughs> so, um, those of you asked me, but I have an idea that I want to share with you. So, they say that we are the problem in flower. Yeah, I'm the goddess of flower fairy. They say we are the problem and we are the solution. So I believe that education is one of the best way to mobilize and come up with a solution for a problem. So I believe we are all individuals and as Miss Earth Bureau have been impacting us with ways to, you know, take care of our environment. I believe that we can educate people on how it's important to, to keep our environment clean, how and, and how we can like manage our waste. So you can go on a radio talk show, let's see our communities, and you know, and just teach people, tell them that if you waste this dirt, it was it will do so and so thing to you and it will, it will harm our daily life. So the rain that's falling is not because it's just on the fall, but it's because you know we are causing it to fall the time is not supposed to fall. So I believe that education is one of the best ways to overcome that. Good point. That's a great one. I told you we're learning from you people. And I just want to say that I think about climate change and how we has to do with us, the way we will manage our environment. So like you rightly said there that what we do, the waste we put up and everything affects us. And us will be the only one that can try to improve on what we do because there are a lot of health implications that comes with these things that we do. But people are not aware. And awareness is key. Like she said, she said we should start from our own homes. We'll try and we need to try. But just looking at the enforcement part of it, one thing I know in Liberia that when there are no laws, like in America, you know, there are certain things you don't even know ask questions. You can just don't make it. You know what will happen to you. So if we can have those things, we can advocate for those little promises to me who will go somewhere. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miss Dean. I want to ask you a question. Psychosocial is one of the biggest problems when it comes to women because of their mind, the way they think. Some way they feel that they have been left out in society. So I want to know if for gender, environment, and life, neighborhood, security, is there a counselor to counsel some of our past leaders has been because they feel that they have been left behind. I mean, women that feel they were, I mean, women, women that were leader before and they, yeah, they have been left behind now in the society. Well, for me. Okay, so, can I ask the question over? If you wish. Okay. 
I see it psychosocial, which has to do with the mind, yeah. have been affecting women, yeah. in which they were leaders before, oh. and now they have been left behind in society. And they do you have a counselor for the gender environment, environment and life and security? Do we have counselor to counsel them? Well, those women that have been left behind, they are leaders. They were, they were so they were leaders, right? And now they feel like they they can go forward. They are backward right now, and they can go forward. So she's trying to ask if if you have counselor, I will counsel them to you know go forward again instead of staying backward. So where they were. I, I I think of and if there is or uh, there was women that were leaders. And now they feel that they are left behind. If they were really and truly a leader, in which I have not seen, I've not seen that yet. And I think that Liberian women, they are very much advanced in the world with leadership. You'll find that Liberian women are very bold. And most of our women, Liberian women, that have been leaders, they were true leaders. You can start with Angie Brooks. Reynolds, who was the first female representative to the UN. You start with Emma Walser. She was the first female judge. And you start with all of those women, they don't feel that they were left behind. And if they feel they were left behind, they know exactly what to do. I visited the presidential center the other day for Madam Ellen Johnson Sadi. I don't know where she, maybe she felt she was left behind. But she's still moving. And all of those women that I know of, if they are true, they are still moving. I don't know any women who are psychologically. Yeah, because you know uh, but if you talk to somebody like that, because they have a big position before. Yeah. And they lost, most of their parents, they lost their family during the like, crisis. And their mind, well, you know, they look like I'm nobody, I'm just alone, I have no family. I, I, I will not go to work, I will not do anything, I just want to be alone. So, yeah, they are mine. But oh, these are women leaders. Yeah. yeah. I would just, I, know, um, I think it comes with support system. Yeah, it also comes with support system. Yes. And, yes. It's very important, like even in our daily lives, there are a lot of things that happen to us. Like for me personally, I should give up. A lot of laughs, a lot of stories, a lot of things that I don't even know about myself will come up. But when you when it comes to how I cope, I think it has to do with my support system. And when when you're talking about counseling, it's basically linked to that. Like I have people who wait call me on a daily basis. People who would come to me when they hear things about me, people who know me personally, even those who are just starting to know me. And one thing I will tell you for sure is that when you are passionate about what you do and have a little support system. And that's why I always tell people the need for mentoring also is key. Each one of us needs to have a mentor. Someone who will reach out to us when they hear about something bad or good about us. Someone we can rely on. Someone we can cry on because we are human beings. That are good women have gone down or gone into the closet because of the way they have been treated. And it is deliberate. Our male counterpart knows our strength. It knows what we stand for. So it will always come at us. That for me, a lot of things come at me in this country. They will say, when they say it to me, I will tell them, say, you, you say nothing because you know I'm strong. I'm stronger than you. And most of them will be men. They ain't doing it because you did anything wrong. They want to break you down. But when you have those support systems, and there where women need to come in. I know women don't like to hear when they say, oh, women are women problem. We are not our problem. Our problem is a national problem. Both male and women contribute to it. But also, do we women recognize that when our females are being 
slander? We will be degraded. Do we recognize these things? Do we come to counsel them? It's very important. And when you say that women will stay at the back, no joke about it. There are some days where you want to feel. I personally want to feel like, why am I feeling myself about my own country that don't want to take me to be anything? People will say the worst thing about me. I will see women doing the worst on a close post. Women will say the worst things about me. And some women who I know, they will know the truth. They will never go for the truth. But what gives me strength is that I'm passionate and I know exactly that intent. And those women who will back those wrongs are being used. And there's a quote about those kind of women. They have their place in hell. <laughs> if they don't change. No, it's serious. Because if you know the truth, I know of women who helped me before. But they have issues with my bare own secret. And why should a woman have issues with somebody else's bare own secret? When I'm a national leader, I'm working and doing the right thing. Why should you worry about what I do in my bedroom? Does that affect society? No. That's my personal issue. So there's a need for us as women to think about how we hold up. And we talk about women empowerment and equality. Why it really worked in Rwanda? There was correlations. There were women groups that held together. And if we don't fall together, we are not going to fight. It's not even about even fighting, we are not going to get our male counterparts. Men in Liberia can tell you for sure they are not hard to deal with. When you make men to understand what your cause is all about, they will understand. In West Africa, we got Google men. But we women, we even decided to hold each other together. Here. And we need to work on it. It's important. We let her hear about our truth. Yeah, work on that. It's very important. So I will leave there one year. All right. Thank you. On the same chain, Dr. Bay. Well, according to the team Gender Environment and Livelihood Security, I want to know how can we as beauty queen impact in the livelihood security of young women and men who are always victims of sexual exploitation and abuse? I said, I want to know how can we as beauty queen impact in the livelihood security of young women and men who are always victims of sexual exploitation and abuse? Your question is, how can you impart Knowledge as beauty and queen. How can we to victims who are always victim of sexual exploitation and abuse? I, I think, in that way, uh, you will have to seek those victims out. And those victims will have to go through counseling because you can't always be a victim of sexual exploitation. Unless you are, unless you are taking advantage of like adolescent girls and boys, so that's why I'm saying that we should always advocate not only for the girls, but we have to advocate policies. That's why we have the law of rape and exploitation. And so, you as beauty queen, you can do this by advocating and how you conduct yourself. I think that would be the answer. Indians. You must not make yourself a victim. And we must teach our adolescent boys and girls not to put themselves in harm's way to be victims, to be victimized. So we need to get more sex education.
the young children on the do's and don'ts and the want for to make themselves and not to become a victim. Does that answer your question? Gender, background, expertise, you know, that are given you, knowledge of livelihood security. So you have a beautiful witness about you to implement everything you have learned, you know, because your implementation will tell people what you have acquired over the, you know, the months or the journey of becoming a beautiful. So even if you don't wait, you still have that knowledge to change a girl or a boy's life. You understand? So this question if you turn it around is actually you supposed to be getting to answer because we are not beautiful. You you know, you are the beautiful, so you need to tell us what quality you will put in place. But however, I'm just buttressing to what she said. You understand? Yeah. So let me say something else. Like in the educational sector. We teach young boys or young girls, we teach our teachers not to set our students up to be victims. As my teacher would say, bring this to my house, bring your homework assignment. So don't make yourself a victim. So we need to advocate and put our policies, billboard, that let our children know that we are no no. If someone comes to you and say, do this, do that, it is a no-no. That's how you uh, avoid becoming a victim. And you, as a beauty queen, you can continue to advocate that. There are things that are written out, especially for the Ministry of Education, which is outlined what you should not do. You girls as beauty queens, I'm sure, they laid it out to you, some do's and don'ts, so you will not become a victim. I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Even though I wasn't here for that topic, but it's really interesting because this is something that I work on on a daily basis. And it's sad that this is happening every day. And it happens within our homes. It comes with those who we are keeping close to. So I'm not going to bother or anything. Who do just take a chance to have the conversation? So having a conversation is very important. There are legal methods, there are procedures in getting reports and everything, but I think the conversation is very important. Because if somebody comes to you and you know that it's inappropriate, you need to say it to somebody. If you keep silent, you get affected. So I hold that conversation with my child. And it's so bad to the extent that I do that almost every day. I don't know why. Maybe because of the stories I hear or I get. I'm afraid. And maybe most people who do it don't know it wrong. So the girls need to know that it's wrong. And maybe if it's me for you to educate them, like even the boys I have around me, like my brothers. Boys and girls, whosoever, I hold those conversations with them. And I make them understand that the day y'all do something, me, I will be able to do So that won't buy play. But it's very, very crucial. And that's one of the issues that affect me and keep with me at the bottom. And it's done. And I feel that women. Can just be marginalized, we can just be played with, women can just be ill treated. And for me, I feel that there is some mental problem with that. And those individuals who do that, because men and women do it, they don't understand that they are crazy. Sometimes they need to understand that. That these things that is happening for a man to look at one day again. Because somebody will say, oh, the young girl, she's dressing sexy. Okay, let's agree. But three months old baby. 
that you exploit. What you really doing? What is sexy about that baby? So it tells you that it's a fundamental problem that goes beyond just being sexy or exposing your body. So if somebody asked the question about prostitution, somebody said it here today. Oh, they say beauty queens are prostitutes. Why would you even want to think on that? Who are the patronizers of prostitutes? Can I mean? Now who can pay the money? So how more call it? <laughs> so you see what can happen? We we can just say all the brand new. But a minute, when they see prostitutes, they get so bad too. I will need another topic. I don't even want to go that route. I missed it too, right? Yeah. Because we're all young, we're prostitute for one job. But who can picture nasty? Yeah. Who had it to be packing? Yeah. Who can pay the money? Yeah. So why should we be carrying our own bread in there now? And I desire them. And we take all the trouble. And you don't see the one be singing a song about Paul Aaron. Or I'd be like, see trouble. You are promoting it now, you also will be talking about it. But it tells you the kind of problem that we will be faced with. Our problems are just so big, so now it, we can't even understand it. It'd be like, when they put it on the ground, okay, but I'm not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss the team. For all in all, for us to live happily on this earth, we, women, and men needs to have that compromise. We need to realize that we are important. We play our own roles. We contribute. And we need not to be marginalized as women. We need to work in it. I'm not one woman who advocates for gender equality to say, I want to be higher than a man. Because honestly, I don't want to do certain things men can do. I love to dress and look good. I didn't want to go face no time. I don't even check my car to know whether or in Isa or no water. I prefer to work here in here, and I feel that the solution comes and is better than for me to be one woman who want to be bossy. I will never advocate for that. So maybe some other female are going to cry at me, but I feel that our solution that we are fighting for in this country is not to be bossy. But to work hand in hand with men. And also making the men, making our men to understand that our roles and what we accrue when we apply what we know and have, it benefits everyone. Because I will have a son that I will dream and he become a man, a gentleman. I give birth to him. And how do I give birth to him? I gotta have one man to help me. So I need that man. I ain't want to be no boss over me. It feels so good to have that partnership. And with that, we get sustainability. So, men, I don't feel bad when I talk with me, but you're yeah, not put around here. Right? And you know, we work here in here, and we need you to support us, or we need you to stay more away. You don't need to understand that part. Period. Yeah, you are on our own. See, all of you are just smiling and start talking good things about your boy. But to be honest, I think it's the way forward. When you talk about sustainability, you talk about gender equality, it's about men and women forming a lives. And like I said in Rwanda, what really work? there was a case of men who were in parliament that joined the women legislative caucus. Even though they have, you know, women separated from men, but those men said that because I'm a he or she, and we want to increase the number of women in parliament, we will join with them. And I think we should be pushing for that. When we push so hard, our men get to, their ego comes out. We know how to soften them. Why are we not using that strategy? Why are we being hostile? They use the other right. No, we're going to get already patronized and they deal with you. So, we can get into that way. But Allah, 
Okay. Again, I'm Miss Lorena B. Johnson, the goddess of words of I want to appreciate Grandma and Mama. And Mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so much. I can start asking Okay, before closing this session, I want for I want you to leave a strong message or not just a statement to us or people out there that are watching, telling them on how to gender. Relate to the environment. Madam Vivian Ines. Um, let me just speak to that. So, how can gender? Um, I would say that we have always been close to environment. Our role that we play, our basic roles like fresh and water. What we do at home and everything relates to the earth and environment. But basically, the key thing to think is that we should always recognize the importance of women rule in environment, which has been lacking. We shouldn't just be in a box. When it comes to taking decision and leadership role, women should be at the table when it comes to the environment. And we should advocate for that. We should say what we want. Thank you. Thank you very much. On the same question, on the same question, I think that we, we are our worst enemy. So we need to support one another. We should not be selfish in our advocacy agenda. We should not always blame the men. We have to come up as a team. That's the only way that gender is going to work, is gender equity. And gender equity means what good for him is good for her. And that's what we should, should remember. So it's not only girls are being raped, boys are being raped. It is not only men that are paying prostitutes, but we have women myself sitting there educating young women yeah about women empowerment and about you know ways to keep our environment clean it's an honor actually 
tomorrow I can stand out there and say, oh yes, um, Madam Ines taught me this and Mrs. Dean taught me this. And I want to be so grateful to La Queen Entertainment for providing this opportunity for us because if it wasn't for them, I was not going to be sitting here or any of, any of us was not going to be sitting here. And so, Madam Ines, I want to say thank you for being our host for today. Like, yeah, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know where to start, but thank you so much. Well, I have listened to Madam Eden and our mother. Each and every one of us have our own part of the story, and you guys said it was actually motivational. My saying is that believe it and you can be it, dream it and go for it. That being a part of this of Nigeria is a privilege because most girls out there don't know their way to like participating in Miss Earth and I signed up for it and I'm first to check the internet. What price you can make it? You will do it. What are you going to do that? You get money. I see yes. The first thing you, you are to do is to take the first step. The first step leads you to your determination and your destination. So I want to thank the queen in the team, our mothers, our aunties, and our queen mother, Miss Opie Dodo, for this platform given to us for our boys to be heard. And uh, this <laughs> and uh, this chat was actually a successful one. I learned from it a lot. And uh, a girl like me from a background that is not recognized today, I believe that I can make a change. Um, I believe that I'm already on stage of positive change. So I'm going to the world to make a change. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, listen back, can you make God as a frog? I learned a lot from you, Bobby, and to Grandma, I got a statement from you that really impressed me a lot, and I believe I'm going to learn from it, not only me, but from my team. And the statement goes like this. If you want so, if you want a one-year investment, plant rice, and if you want a 10-year investment, plant trees, and if you want an investment forever, you have to invest in education. And for me, I'm a strong believer. I'm a strong believer of education because I believe that education is the most powerful weapon. We all can use to change Mother Earth. If we want to change Mother Earth, we have to be educated from the mind because the mind is, at, is the powerhouse. So thank you so much. And I believe in your word and I'm going to live by it. Thank you, Mommy, Vivian Ennis, and our grandma, Madam Matron. Then thank you to our queen mother, Miss Wuchi Koto. Our organizers of Miss Earth Latino, in your presence. They are all smiling, they are so proud of us. They are very impressed. It's a great honor and privilege to be Stay along with these phenomenal women. They thank you because if it was not for Lako, I learned a lot. Like when our mom was talking, and she said, she saw her sitting at the table when she went to a burger. She just stayed there, going clean. People, she just going to be nanny. Go like the the women of the film and the poor thing her for you today. Thank you. Who lights on it? Put the light on. What's up, Mr. Two? Say thank you and mommy will say thank you for all the words you brought to us. I'm leaving here with a strong belief in myself. Like 
I can go for it no matter what. And I will raise more awareness to more people about how to protect the earth. And so my beautiful sisters, we need to keep pushing. The world needs to see what we are made of. Hey, mommy, don't give up on us.
The future of money is here. eWally allows you to pay, transfer, and shop online all from one place. Your phone. Setting up eWally is simple. Sign up, deposit money at any vendor, and start shopping. eWally has already caught the attention of hundreds of people who use the app to transfer money and pay for goods, water, electricity, and TV. The number of users is growing every day. Do you want to grow your business, reach more people online, or make more money? You can offer your products online on our app, and your customers can pay you safely with eWally. Our eWally team will take care of delivering your products from you to your customer. You will receive your money instantly through our banking partner, GT Bank. Businesses get their first three months completely free of charge. Set up your business account with eWally.com. Our customer service is available if you have any questions.